Does it take any faith at all to be an atheist? Well, no, of course not. We have all the evidence on our side. What it does take is desperation on the part of the religious, and they're not exactly good at that, are they? Then again, they're not running these ideas past any actual atheists, are they? They never ever do that. It's just religious story time making things up to keep the already faithful happy. Yet, that's not remotely realistic, is it? Because they just don't care about reality. Today, we're going to do something a little bit out of the ordinary. We're going to look at an irrational Jew. And that doesn't seem to happen a lot, but, you know, hey, when you find it, you go with it. That's not a very common thing to find on YouTube these days, but then again, I'm not usually looking for those. I just happen to stumble across this one, and there you go. So here we have a rabbi trying to explain why it takes faith to be an atheist just like Frank Turek and people of his ilk do. And he's not going to get any further than the Christians do, because it's all dumb. So, let's go take a look and see what he has to say. It always amazes me that people who profess to be staunch atheists when opening up their daily paper, often go straight to the horoscope page. I don't. I mean, honestly, newspapers are dead. I haven't taken a daily paper in decades, and I stopped subscribing when we realized that we just had these things piling up next to the fireplace. So, uh, no. I don't know that I've ever looked at a horoscope in a newspaper in my life at least not seriously. I'm willing to bet that this is another just-so story that the religious love to throw around because they know that no actual atheist is going to be paying much attention. Well, here I am, so uh, I guess that didn't work out for you. I know lots of atheists, and I honestly don't know a single one that pays the slightest bit of attention to horoscopes, or likely any of the other things that he's going to accuse us of coming up. We might get a chuckle out of it, because, as anyone who understands horoscopes knows, it's all just a load of bunk that applies equally to just about anybody, depending on how you read it. But we don't actually believe in any of this stuff. So... The rabbi is going to lie, as usual. I guess there's no real surprise there. Up to a third of self-declared atheists in China believe in astrology. A quarter of Brazilian atheists believe in reincarnation, and a similar number of their Danish counterparts think that some people have magical powers. Then it's a good thing I'm not in any of those countries then, isn't it? And it's a good thing that the vast majority of atheists aren't in any of those countries. Because here's a news flash for you, Rabbi. Atheism is just the state of not believing in gods. That's it. That's all it is. Now, that doesn't mean they're foolproof, but it gets you a hell of a lot closer than religion does. Granted, I think it's pretty funny how he's not talking about the religious here, isn't it? Because they hold far more woo beliefs than atheists do by a fairly wide margin. In a recent Pew survey, only 3% of atheists believed in astrology. Since he brought that up, I'm just going to prove that he's wrong. Compared to about 26% of Christians. There isn't an entry for Jews, so uh, we don't know about that. But, you know, it's probably pretty damn close. 7% of atheists believe in reincarnation, compared to 29% of Christians. So, if you're going to criticize atheists, you have to criticize your own side even more. And here's a weird one. According to the same survey, only 80% of self-identified Christians say they believe in God. Well, that's kind of weird, isn't it? How does that work exactly? The survey specifically said that atheists are much less likely to believe in any of the New Age woo-woo beliefs, 
and that Americans who reject both religious and spiritual labels are also more likely to reject woo across the board. So, uh, he's just wrong in all of that. Like, that's a surprise. This is what happens when you cherry-pick your data for nefarious purposes and figure your audience is too dumb to know any different. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, belief in seances, tarot, mesmerism, and other seemingly supernatural phenomena flourished quite often independently of particular religious belief systems. Well, they aren't specifically religious beliefs, so, um... Sure, I guess? I'm not sure why we would expect that not to be the case. Of course, since he's talking about things a hundred years out of date, I'm not sure what his point is either. Atheists 500 years ago probably believed a lot of crazy things too. That's just the world that they happen to live in. However, atheists overall have gotten better, while the religious, um... Well, they still believe the same insane nonsense that they always have. Take a look at Flat Earthers, for instance. How many of those are religious? 99.9999999%? Yeah, pretty much. Everybody but Jaronism, it seems. Atheists don't fall for that crap. Just the stupid religious people do. Again, I'm not sure what it is that he's trying to get at, because if you look at the actual situation, it sure seems like it's a whole lot more damning for the religiously delusional than it ever is for the atheists. But then again, truth and religion, they don't tend to go together, so uh, who the hell knows? I think the reason for all this may be that being an atheist requires an awful lot of faith. It requires absolutely nothing of the sort. This is just another example of a theist not having the slightest clue what the hell they're talking about. Because that's such a surprise, right? Because not only are all of his facts entirely out of context and irrelevant, but I don't figure he has any idea what the hell atheism even is in the first place. And that's not really that surprising, is it? Now, we don't take on a lot of Jews around here, mostly because they don't tend to make complete assholes of themselves on YouTube like this guy is. But here's an example that proves that they certainly can and do act like idiots. So please, Rabbi, tell us more about how we're so bad. This ought to be good for a laugh. Faith that the world just plopped into existence. Faith that the incredibly complex and beautifully wonderful world that we live in just evolved from some primordial slime in unspecified days of yore. Faith that love, courage, jealousy, avarice are all just chemical dances in our brains. Oh, you mean all the things that we accept that are based on evidence. The religious don't tend to like the evidence when it disagrees with their emotional conclusions because they really aren't that conversant in the real world. They just make stuff up because it makes them happy. And that, whether they like it or not, is just dumb. This is also why they don't like to talk to us because atheists, by and large, would just be rolling in the aisles at this maroon. That's why we don't take any of them seriously, because they are so clearly and obviously out of their ever-loving minds. We don't have faith in any of those things. We don't need faith. We've got evidence. We've got facts. And that's why the religious are so dishonest, because they have to make it seem like we are how we're not. And that's dishonest or stupid. Pick one. Instinctively, we know we come from somewhere. Oh, right. Yeah, he's going to tell us what we know, even though we'd actually tell him that he's full of crap if he bothered to talk to us. Because he's not talking to us, is he? He's talking to the rest of the mindlessly faithful who are just looking for a comforting yarn that will just keep them believing. It's just ludicrous when you get right down to it, and that's why their leadership are so dumb or dishonest. 
They're either stupid enough to believe it themselves, or they've got a profit motive in mind that keeps them telling wild stories from the Bema because they don't care any more than the Christians do, or the Muslims, or the Hindus, or any of the rest, because none of them actually give a crap. And we know we are going somewhere. And where would that be? And more importantly, how do you know it? How have you determined this other than yanking it straight out of your asshole? This is the problem that we have. They just make things up or follow along with the crap that other people have made up when we ask them the hard questions. They don't have any worthwhile answers because they just don't care. They believe it because they want to believe it. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian or a Muslim or a Jew because they're all doing the exact same thing and it's just as stupid for all of them. The soul intuits its own immortality in spite of the body's determined arguments to the contrary. It says in Pasha's Chukat, this is the decree, the Chok of the Torah. I don't care what your book says. It's no more impressive than the Bible or the Quran or the Vedas or any of the others. It's just something that primitive people made up to make themselves happy, at least until you can prove otherwise. You're the one making the assertion. You're the one that has to prove it. You're the one thinking that your imaginary friend was involved. It's time for you to back that up or be made the fool that you certainly seem desperate to be. That's why you spend all of your time talking only to people who already believe what you do. Because you can't actually convince anybody rationally who isn't already on your side. Why is that? Are your arguments really that weak? And the answer, of course, is yes. Yes, they are. There are three kinds of laws in the Torah. Mishpatim, Ediut, and Chukim. A Mishpat is a law like... Thou shalt not kill. It's a seemingly logical statute that is shared by the whole of the civilized world. You're pretty sheltered, aren't you? Because if you look at some of the crap that Israel has pulled, you'd know that that is simply not true. The crap that they've pulled in the West Bank and the occupied territories, they're nothing to be proud of. In fact, a lot of it violates international law. Now, I suspect he doesn't care. It isn't like the Palestinians are remotely innocent in this regard either, but you're not putting yourself in a good place when you're ignorant of the entire history of your religion. You might want to go and look at some of the things your people did in the name of your imaginary friend in the Old Testament. You people have some serious problems. An Eidut is a testimony of faith like Shabbat, whose observance testifies that God created the world and everything in it in six days. Well, that's your claim at least, but that doesn't make it true. And this is a problem that most of the religious tend to have. They just assume that whatever their beliefs say are true, rather than having to attempt to demonstrate it and back it up with evidence. They're the ones with the faith, not us. We have evidence they have nothing. They have wishful thinking and blind faith. That's it. And that's not something that anybody, anybody at all, ought to be proud of. And a chok is a mitzvah that is ostensibly self-contradictory, like the purifying process of the ashes of the red heifer. Its ashes purify those who are contaminated and contaminate those who prepare those ashes. So, tradition, which doesn't make it true. Because the only people who ever seem to care about truth, actual truth in religion, are the non-religious. And it's kind of funny how that works, isn't it? I don't care what you believe. I don't care what you have faith in. I don't care what you wish was so. I care what you can prove. And you people are utterly terrible at doing any of that, period. You don't have anything. You just have wishes and dreams, and that's really childish. Maybe it's time you people grew up. Just saying. Why? Go figure. Isn't that your job? I mean, 
if you don't understand it and can't explain it in some rational, evidence-based way, then why in the world would you believe it, much less me? I shouldn't believe it, and neither should you. Yet, this is exactly how religion works. It's not just the Jews, it's every religion. And every religion is just as asinine as the rabbi here is. He puts up a video saying it takes a lot of faith to be an atheist, and then spends most of it showing how the only one with any faith in this question is him. It's kind of a problem, right? But he'll never ever see it that way, will he? A chok is a self-contradictory as a soul inside a body. There's no evidence for a soul. Your fifis don't matter. Stop making a fool of yourself. Just because you wish it was so, that doesn't mean that it is. And he says we have faith. No, we're just not stupid like he is. This is not doing your side any favors, Rabbi. This is making you all look like a bunch of dumbasses. Maybe for your own good, you ought to knock that off. It's like a divine kiss, only understood by the partners to its intimacy. Ah, uh, yeah. After that, it just goes into an animation that means nothing and a bunch of advertising, so we're just going to skip over all of that. If you want to see the original, go ahead, link down below, you get it. I've got a serious question, though. Was there anything, anything at all, of any substance here at all? He starts off making empty accusations, paired with a very flawed understanding of the actual data, and then he launches into a bunch of hippy-dippy religious nonsense aimed at others who already believe for no rational reason whatsoever, and he never comes back to the supposed main point. Why in the world would you release a video called It Takes a Lot of Faith to Be an Atheist if you're actually going to do such a piss-poor job of even talking about atheism? Anyway, I linked to the Pew Research study down below, which is sure a hell of a lot more than he did to support his claims. You can check it out if you'd like. There it is. This is being completely unable to follow a single train of thought. Maybe at his age, he's a little addled, I don't know, but that's not really an excuse, is it? It's kind of sad, but this is religion we're talking about, and it's all sad. This is not something that ought to impress anybody. Embarrass? Yes. Impress? No. So why does it? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I get that it does but there doesn't seem to be any rational justification for it. And that's kind of a problem, no matter what religion you subscribe to. So, uh, yeah, maybe you should stop doing that. Dick it, bum, 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 d